What is the new sub three marathon? Is it 2.42? Is it 18 minutes quicker? Is it 10% quicker? Should we be running 10% quicker now that we have super shoes, now that we have so much knowledge on nutrition and we're putting that to work for us, and now we have more information on training. As long as we don't let our watches and our heart rate and everything else that can do slow us down, should we be aiming? Is it reasonable to be aiming 10% quicker? So if you've been training for a sub three hour marathon and you're just trying to dip under, and get that 259, maybe it's just happened and now you wanna go quicker and you're wondering how much. 4.15 per kilometer or 6.52 per mile you've been working at. And so the training that you've been doing, whether your midweek intervals, your tempo sessions, and your long run, as soon as they get specific, the pace that you've been aiming at is 4.15 per kilometer, or 6.52. There or thereabouts, playing with that speed, making it feel comfortable so that you can efficiently move over the ground at 4.15 per kilometer so that it feels comfortable and as comfortable as possible for as long as possible in the marathon, ideally 25, 30, 35K, so that then you can push. Once it starts to get hard and you need to dig in, then you can push towards the finish and hopefully gain time and run 257 or 258. Those are the paces that you've been working at in training, probably. What about if you switched your training completely and started working to three minutes 50 per kilometer, which is two hours 42 pace? What would then change? How long can you currently run for the pace of three, out, three minutes and 50 seconds? Can you hold it for 500 meters? Can you hold it for a kilometer? Can you hold it for 5K? The chances are that if you can run a three hour marathon, you can currently run around about 1850 for 5K. So you can already run 350 per kilometer for 5K. You can already run five kilometer in your new target marathon pace. Is it that inconceivable to be able to hold that for the whole marathon and run 10% quicker for 42K or 26 miles? I would argue that it is possible for every single man to, who has run that sub three hour marathon and any woman who has run that sub three hour marathon to run 10% quicker. Now, depending on your starting point and how long you've been running for, and specifically how long you've been following a structured training pr program is gonna determine how much work you need to put into that. But is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? I think so, absolutely. If you take into consideration the gains you're getting from super shoes, which the studies have shown are between five, 10, 15%. So if you put that in the middle at 10%, that should already give you the 18 minutes that you need to run two hours and 42 minutes. What about nutrition? If you're completely honest with yourself, how would you rate your nutrition game on the day and also in the training leading up to? How are you training your stomach ready to take on the nutrition that you need during race day to get the most out of your body, to run as fast as you possibly can on that one morning, on that one day? How would you rate it? Most people would rate it less than five out of 10. If you speak to most runners, even running those quicker times, they will take a gel every 40 minutes. Maybe they remember every 30 minutes. We now know that we can take a gel every 20 minutes or 80 grams of carbohydrate per hour. How many people are training to that? How many people that are dipping under sub three are working with older school methods? I speak to people all the time that it's literally an afterthought. I speak to people who are running sub three hour marathons that will think about it. Oh yeah, the expo, I need to get some gels. What did I go for? Oh, these are on discount at the moment. I'll get some of those. What about if they not just raced with it optimally, but train the stomach and to metabolize it properly so you're getting it into the stomach, it's not sloshing around, but you're using it as energy to get you to the finish line quicker. How does that then change your game? I would argue that that and training with the race day nutrition in your interval sessions, in your faster sessions, and in your specific long runs, I would argue that that gives you way more than 10%, way more than super shoes. Because if you're going into your faster sessions and your longer sessions, knowing that you can hit those hard without the wear and tear on your body, without that muscle damage, it's gonna give you the confidence to push harder and go faster for your interval session and to go faster within the segments that you're in marathon pace specific or half marathon pace or 10K pace within the specific long run. That's gonna give you way more than 10%. If you train with it over the weeks, over the course of the 13 week training schedule towards race day, that's more than 10%.
So we really should be coming in towards 2.30 something. And I think a lot of us, and I see this a lot in the comments, or my heart rate says that I'm underproductive or overproductive, or I should be working on this, I should be, my heart rate said that I, I slept badly last night and therefore I should take, who's doing the control? Are you controlling your watch or is your watch controlling you? If you know one of the best marathon runners of all time from the UK, Steve Jones, he famously won't let his runners or wouldn't let his runners for a long time go to heart rate during sessions because he wants them to know what it feels like to put in the effort and to go by how they feel. How much of us are holding ourselves back because what our watch is telling us? Now we've got an even bigger factor, which is you have got direct access to coaches who have been there and done it and made massive gains. I started my marathon at four hours 25 and quickly got that to three hours 25, but then got it all the way to two hours 21 and I'm still not finished. I still want more. I still want that elusive sub 220, but I don't just want to stop there. I want it to be a continual progression towards reaching what my capacity is, to what, towards what my potential is. You've got access to people like me and other coaches. So you can tap into that and figure out, okay, what did you do? <laughs> what did you do when it started to go well for you? When you started to run those 230s or those 240s, what did you do differently? And, and you can take that. Whereas when I started, it was kind of like, okay, you're Googling something and maybe you, you go to Macmillan Race Calculator and you put in your 5K time or your 1K time. It'll give you an indication. And then you can maybe read a book and it's, you know, it's a pretty long book. And the marathon training programs within that are very extensive and pretty much aimed at elite athletes who've got full-time training ahead of them and all the time to rest and recover, which is a big part of it. Another factor, if you bring your stress down and you look after your sleep, how does that then look for your training? I think if you take into consideration race day shoes, super shoes, at least 10% for a lot of runners, depending, I know, depending on how you run, but definitely more beneficial the faster you are. If you're then looking at nutrition and you seriously look at it, not just for race day, but in your training too, so you're able to push, recover faster, and then run faster or harder more frequently, that's even bigger benefits, an even bigger jump than 10% from your super shoes. Working with a coach, somebody who's been there and done it, and knows how to get you, and is passionate about getting you to run, not just two minutes quicker, but 20 minutes quicker. That's somebody in your corner who can really help you. If you look at all aspects of your game, for me, it was eight different aspects, whether it's exercise physiology, what is the blood doing at the same rate? How does that correlate to heart rate? What am I doing in the weight room? Am I doing the right exercises and am I doing them often enough and at the right time in the week? What does my training volume look like? Am I happy with that? Is it optimal or can I be doing better? What is my nutrition on my day-to-day -day diet? What is that out of 10? What would I give it? What would a sports nutritionist give it? How can I improve it? You look at your diet, improve your diet, become, you become stronger in the gym. If you become stronger in the gym, all of a sudden you can look at your metrics, you, or, or your biomechanics on Garmin Connect, and you can see what your stride length is and how it's improving. You can see then what your cadence needs to be and how your heart rate is affected by a strong push off with your glutes, fast feet, stronger stride length and less cadence so that when you up that cadence to what feels natural for you, you're a faster runner, you get into the finish line faster, just, just a basic math sum. You look at all the different areas and you can commit the time and I get it, I completely get it. One big factor for me that moved forward when I went from running reasonably quick, just under three hours, to running two hours 21, was I just needed to be incredibly selfish with my time. And that is the cold hard fact of it. You need to become pretty selfish in order to get to that, I wouldn't say elite level for marathon running. I don't class myself as an elite marathon runner running 220 or 221. I think the guys who are running 204, 205 and less than, and then the best in Europe or the best in America running sub 208, I think those guys are elite. I would class myself as sub elite, but it still takes a selfish athlete to be able to run at those paces and put that level of commitment and time into your rest and recovery and guarding your sleep. That's not somebody who can get up and do a full-time job. And if you can, then you didn't have the same full-time job that I did when I, when I was trying to do both. And you could see, I could see why it wasn't working. But if you can do it, all respect to you because to do both at once is incredible. And then I would be thinking naturally, what is my potential if I take away that full-time job and I really go at this for a year?